Hey everyone, welcome back to the Alberta Roundup. I'm your host, Rachel Emanuel. We are back to our regular programming. If you haven't had a chance to see my episode from last week yet, head over to YouTube and give that a watch. You won't want to miss True North host Andrew Lawton's insights onto the province of Alberta and some of the major news stories that I missed while I was away. That being said, we have a great show for you guys today. A lot of big things happening in the province. Here's a look at what we'll be discussing today. Alberta Premier Danielle Smith has invoked the Sovereignty Act for the first time. There's also been some positive changes regarding photo writer and a huge investment into the province, which will create thousands of jobs. Finally, you won't want to miss the Alberta politics funny moment of the week. All that and more happening now on the Alberta Roundup. Okay guys, up first, Alberta Premier Danielle Smith said she's invoking the Sovereignty Act for the first time to challenge Ottawa's regulations which would require a net zero electricity grid by 2035. No doubt you remember that Danielle Smith first pitched the Sovereignty Act during the United Conservative Party leadership race. It was very controversial at the time. Of course, she won that race and it was her first piece of legislation as Premier. The bill was pitched as a mean to bar federal legislation deemed harmful to Alberta and its interests. In this case, Smith said she invoked the act to show that she was serious about challenging Ottawa's energy regulations, which would wreak havoc on Alberta's natural gas-based grid. Here's what she had to say about invoking the Sovereignty Act to reporters on Monday. We developed this legislation to shield the province from federal intrusions, and we're using it now because the consequences of this particular overreach would be so severe. Alberta will bear the largest share of the expenses required to meet these absurd targets, and consumers and businesses will see their bills soar. If the federal government has its way, many people will be left without electricity that they can pay for on a power grid that will fall short or even fail in a typical Alberta winter or summer. I'm sure this won't come as a surprise to you all, but Environment Minister Stephen Gobo doesn't appear to be taking the Premier seriously. Here was his response to the news that she would be invoking the Sovereignty Act for the first time to challenge his government. We will continue moving ahead with this. Uh, there is no legal basis for what Alberta is, 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 is doing. And we feel uh, that we're on very solid ground. And the fact that we already have some provinces who are on board with us, as well as a number of private companies and investors who say that this is the way to the future. Under the Alberta Sovereignty Within a United Canada Act, the Premier put forward a motion which would require the Alberta government to take several actions. Most notable among the actions, it would compel Alberta regulators and officials not to comply with regulations so long as they are not breaking federal law. Those regulations are still in draft, but they are expected to be enacted soon. The motion also calls on Alberta to look into creating a Crown Electricity Corporation. Now, the purpose of this Crown Corporation would not be to compete with Alberta's private electricity power system, but rather to look into generating electricity in the case of a shortage. Moving into the controversy of the week, the Alberta government has banned photo radar on ring roads around Edmonton and Calgary. It says it will instead allow the cities to move those photo radar cameras to places like construction zones, schools, and playgrounds. There are currently eight photo radar cameras on Calgary's ring road and a whopping 22 cameras in Edmonton. When making the announcement last week, Alberta Transportation Minister Devin Dreeshen said, Albertas are concerned that these photo radar cameras are not being used because of safety, but rather to generate revenue for the cities. Here's what that sounded like. Now, some Albertans believe that municipalities operate photo radar solely to generate revenue and, and is not for the improvement of traffic safety. So there's a lot uh, of concern over fishing holes that we've heard from Albertans. Now, uh, since then, we've now had years worth of data to review, and we have come to the conclusion that some photo radar sites are indeed designed to generate revenue, not to improve safety. So let me be perfectly clear, this will end here in the province of Alberta. The Alberta government will now work with law enforcement to remove all fishing hole locations, referring to cameras where there is no safety concern. Now, the reason I put this story as the controversy of the week, because while it is trending in the right direction, it does not quite go far enough. Comment below if you agree that it is time for Alberta to ban photo radar entirely. Perhaps more importantly, 
email your city councilors and let them know that you hate these policies. And while we're at it, let's do away with those stupid drive safe vehicles. I cannot stand this program. I couldn't believe it that shortly after moving to Alberta, I received a ticket in the mail for $120 for going 10 kilometers over the speed limit. An officer would never ticket you that much. They probably wouldn't even pull you over for going 10 kilometers an hour over the speed limit. At least in Ontario, it's generally considered that the speed limit is just 10 kilometers an hour over whatever is posted. So it's one thing if you get pulled over fair and square, then it's up to you to reason your way out of that ticket. But I really don't agree with these policies. I don't like that the government is watching all our actions, constantly finding new ways to monitor us and then penalizing us if we don't comply with their regulations. Comment below if you agree. Moving into what we're watching in the weeks to come, Alberta Premier Danielle Smith and Federal Finance Minister Christian Freeland this week announced a $8.9 billion investment by Dow into the province's Fort Saskatchewan area. That will become home to Dow's Path Zero facility, the world's first net zero scope one and two greenhouse gas emissions integrated ethylene cracker and derivative site. Now, for those of you who thought that was a little bit of word salad, here's the great takeaway. It will create 6,000 construction jobs and 400 to 500 permanent jobs once the site is operational. In an announcement on Wednesday, government officials were joined by Dow CEO Jim Fitterling. He said products made at this facility will have greenhouse gas footprints less than half of products made at other plastic alternatives. He added, quote, we intend to take that to zero. Christia Freeland said the investment is evidence that her government's plans are working. Here's what that sounded like. We said that those tax credits would create great careers for Canadians, for people like the great Canadians who are here with me, that they would build stronger communities and help reduce our emissions at the same time. Today is proof that it's working. Moving into the Alberta politics funny moment of the week, you guys are going to love this. Transportation Minister Devin Dreeshen was being interviewed by 630 chat host Stacey Brotzel about his photo raider when she asked him about the Alberta Sovereignty Act, reminding him that his former boss and former Premier Jason Kenney once called the Sovereignty Act illegal, cockamamie, and said it would turn Alberta into a banana republic. Here's Dreeshen's response. But your old boss called it cockamamie and illegal and would turn us into a banana republic, so I guess that's politics, right? And I wonder what he's doing now, yeah. Oh. Oof, that's gotta hurt. Okay, guys, that's everything we have for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Alberta Roundup. As always, if you're able, please consider supporting our work over at donate.tnc.news. I will see you all next week. God bless.